Alright guys, this is Lost Dreams 2580, uh, coming back to uh, talk to you a little bit more about getting started, um, getting your grind on. Now most likely that you're, you are you already played with your Warframe, so your frame is a little bit leveled up more than this one, but for the sake of um, sake of the video and demonstrations and so on and so forth, I will take and level up some frames I don't have so that it puts me in a similar situation to you guys out there that are just starting out the only difference is going to be that my guns and uh, my mods are a little bit more accessible than what you may have at the moment so last time I touched on a couple things um, touched on a couple gear that you might be able to get your hands on early and uh, that will help you out a lot and also your other teammates that you're playing with um, I also touched a little bit on auras and stuff like that. So, like I said, you'll notice that this is an unranked Ash suit. Never played him before. Um, right first out of the gate, I want to explain a couple things uh, about your mastery ranking, and also then onto your your leveling up of weapons and frames. Um, your mastery ranking in this game is truly about how much of the game you actually master. Um, when you level something up to level 30, uh, like, for example, your frame, uh, your Warframe will give you 200 points per level. You will only ever be able to level that piece of equipment up one time. Uh, if you would, say, sell it and buy it back again and then re-level it, you will not get any more mastery ranking for it, okay? So... Same with weapons. Weapons, um, for example, the Soma there that I have, um, I already leveled it up, so no matter whether I take and Forma it or whether I take and actually take and uh, buy it again and re-level another one, I will not get any more mastery ranking for it. Weapons themselves will only give you 100 uh, points towards your mastery per level. So that also goes for things such as like um, Sentinel weapons, um, your Sentinel itself is classified in the same rankings as your Warframe. Uh, Kubros, they're the same thing as, as leveling a Warframe, so you would get 200 per rank on them as well, too. Um, now, uh, before I go any further here, uh, come down to gear. And I didn't show you guys how to equip your gear on your last time. Um, this is the wheel that's operated default by Q. Uh, when you hold it down in the game, you can access your your items and drop them uh, while you're playing. So make sure that you equip whatever you may have may have gotten from the store into those, and uh, you'll be able to use them. I'm um, trying to gonna yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Forgive me. I still am not used to actually talking. Uh, kind of feel silly. It makes me feel like I'm talking to myself. So either I'm crazy or I'm entertaining. I don't know which. You guys can choose. Um, Anyway, um, now, back up here to upgrades. So before I go in, I, I did mention about auras to you guys, about them, and polarity slots I touched on a little bit. This is, you know, you guys have already figured out that this is a polarity slot. Basically what it does down here is it cuts it in half, cuts the cost in half. So this intensify is 10, but because I have it on a matching polarity slot it then cuts it in half allowing me to equip a lot more stuff um, my aura is normally nine and they cost nothing even though they still have polarity cost up there it actually costs nothing to equip all it will do is it will continue to give you the amount um, uh, twice the amount if it matches or it will cut it down if it does not match. So for example, if I put a polarity such as corrosive uh, projection in there, instead of it giving me 14, it'll only end up giving me five. But still, I'll get that five extra points to, to a naked frame. Um, so basically, it, it's a way to give you a head start on frames that you are getting ready to rank. Um, like I said, I'm going to try to get through this as quick as possible because I do not edit um, any of my videos 
because I feel that it drops the quality, the visual quality of the video itself. So most likely I'll go through this for about 12 minutes and then it'll flip over to part two or whatever, if, unless of course I do this real quick. All right, so I ended up beefing myself up just a little bit because I'm, you know, using a new frame and stuff like that. Very important to have your shields because they regenerate. Um, but anyway, so there are also several things that you might want to know too. Um, leveling guns. If you want to level your primary, your secondary, or your melee weapon a lot faster, um, what happens is when you get kills, it is split between your warframe and your weapons. Okay, unless you kill with your warframe ability, and then your warframe gets a hundred percent of it. Um, but any other time when you're killing with guns, it is then separated between each of your weapons that are equipped. Um, so if you want to level your your guns faster, uh, all you have to do is remove any weapons that you don't want to level. This way, it gets the full split to one weapon, and then the rest goes to the Warframe. Um, I forget the percentages. Anytime you want to find out what the percentages on certain things are, or, um, most of you probably already done it, used, used Wiki. It's not always 100% correct, but it will give you a, a sense of what it may be. Usually it's pretty close that I, I've done with most of the calculations and stuff like that. Um, so, I guess I'm going to jump in. Now, for the sake of actually um, doing these videos so that I don't get caught in anything or, or, or have bad lag or anything like that, I'm going to be playing on solo. Um, the majority of the population of this game loves leveling their stuff up on Apollodorus. Um, I personally do, too, because it's not about the level of the character, your, your, the enemy NPC that you're killing. It's about how many you can possibly kill. So the better you get with your... the more you'll be able to last in a survival. Survivals are endless until you decide to end it. Plus, they're also a good way of actually getting mods. Um, you're also guaranteed a key after a certain amount of time, which is 15 minutes. You'll, you'll get a key for the void. Um, now, I said about doing that there. I dropped one, one of those equipment I told you to get, boom, I'm full on energy. Um, running alone is not as good as running with other people because of the fact that um, you can stay close to your teammates and they will actually give you their XP as you go. So like you saw that affinity pop up there when I shot him. And that means that I get points. And oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> like I said, I'm not used to talking and shooting. But um if if I had a teammate that actually did that right beside me, they would take and um I would get points split up as if I killed them. Anyway, let's get to a safer spot here. Anyway, so as I go, what I want to do is I want to take and draw them in my direction. Most times, they will spawn and follow you from where you came from. So that usually leaves you in a good point to know that they're going to be running behind you. So if you're running any distance, in the other direction, most likely they're going to take and um, be following you, so you'll know that they're behind you. Um, one good thing about doing this stuff is um, hunk it's called camping. You want to you take and uh, find a location where you can't see anything where they're coming from, because what happens is they spawn in directions that you cannot see. So like if I come in here and hunker down, they will continuously spawn and try to come get me. Um, what happens a lot of times when you're in pub matches 
uh, with with other players and stuff like that. They 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 spend so much time running around in different directions that you can never actually um, you can never actually uh, let them spawn. See, because the more people are actually looking in different directions. Um, the less spot the computer has to generate the characters uh, that are going to be coming after you. Man, this is so hard talking. <laughs> like, I'm used to bullshitting, but actually um, trying to give instruction and stuff while I'm, while I'm playing is, is ridiculous. So, but anyway... Here in a little bit, I'll probably just turn off the mic and carry on. But yeah, so when you're in pub matches with other people that are actually um, running and leveling and stuff like that, try to stick as close as possible to them. It's going to be really hard because, like I said, a lot of veterans of the game actually use these areas to, um, to level up new frames and stuff until they get them strong enough to, to start really going to the bigger the bigger game, so to speak. And don't be afraid to spam your abilities. Because it really helps leveling up. Because remember, every kill that you get while spamming an ability gives you 100% um, to your Warframe. Some abilities are aimed, some aren't. Um, another thing. Don't make the mistake, you'll probably get bitched at by people called noobs, so on and so forth. All sorts of shit. Um, if you take and um, activate the life support before 70%, all life support modules that are activated by you will grant you 30% to your life support. So if you activate it before 70%, it's a waste. A lot of people won't activate it until like 40 to make room for the pickups, but um, I don't really worry about it that much. I did not bring a slow weapon with me because when you're leveling up Warframes it's a lot easier to have an automatic weapon with you than it is to actually take and try to have a bow. That's why I said about not using full stealth weapons. Now, at any given time, when you play solo by yourself, you always have the option to take and leave. So pride never factors in. Um, if you are playing with a group that is continuously staying and it's well past your level, like usually around 30 minutes, it really starts to get hectic. Um, if you notice that it's getting to that point, what you want to do is you want to pick someone that seems to know what they're doing and you want to try to hug with them. Uh, because a lot of times they will be able to support you in ways that you don't think that would be possible. But if they're good players, they will take and keep you afloat. Plus also, like I said, the added bonus of being able to 
of being able to get their skill points. A lot of people call it leeching if you don't do anything. And here I'm talking, I need to get to the next life support. Life support in Now I am doing a lot of running as of right now because of the fact that I don't have a place to really hunker down yet. And uh, start.